if people were to trade gold for silver at an 85 to 1 ratio, if all that happened was that gold were to fall back to, that ratio fall back to its 50-year average of roughly 42 or 43 to 1, you double the amount of gold you started with if you switch back in. Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on the Miles Franklin channel on Thursday, October 25th. And excited today to have the founder of Miles Franklin, Mr. Andy Schechtman, join us, especially at this particular time. A lot of wild things going on in the market, one of which we've seen the gold to silver ratio go pretty much to the high end, around 85 to 1 now. And fortunately, Andy has been kind enough to provide some solutions for investors wondering what to do or how to perhaps position for that. So Andy, how are you doing today, my friend? And great to have you on here. Chris, thanks, buddy. Yeah, always good to be here. Gold to silver ratio is certainly worthy of talking about. I'm glad that uh, we have the opportunity to do so today. I think it's very important. So it is at the higher end and a lot of folks wondering what to do. What are you seeing there? What seems to make sense? And what are you recommending for your clients to do right now? Sure. Uh, over the past couple of years, I've, I've talked a lot about anomalies and, and distortions in the marketplace that have taken place, probably largely in part to the manipulation of the metal prices. Uh, and when I go back over the years and I look at what's been successful to Miles Franklin, almost every single successful trade centered around taking advantage of a disconnection in price or an anomaly, um, a distortion. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now, Chris. If, if you go back almost 50 years, there's been one brief moment at the very beginning of my career in 1993 where you could get more silver for trading your gold. And I guess for, for those people who don't aren't familiar with the gold to silver ratio, that would be the number of ounces of silver that it takes to buy one ounce of gold. Uh, and in nature, ge uh, geologically, silver is 15.5 times more abundant than is gold. And, that's probably why we get the 16 to 1 ratio you hear an awful lot about that had been in place for many, 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 many hundreds of years, if not longer. Uh, and, and again, in the last five decades, the average ratio has been closer to 45 to 1 rather than 85 to 1 where we find ourselves right now. This is a, basically a once in a five decade opportunity to take advantage of a distortion in the marketplace. My thinking, Chris, is that if people were to trade gold for silver at an 85 to 1 ratio, if all that happened was that gold were to fall back to, that ratio fall back to its 50-year average of roughly 42 or 43 to 1, you double the amount of gold you started with if you switch back in. And in this industry, playing the ratios has almost always proven to be uh, successful and a good move and um, the law of averages and historical relationships are there for a reason and when you find yourself violating those averages I guess it would be like at an 85 to 1 ratio Chris it would be like if tomorrow morning people in Phoenix woke up to three feet of snow I don't think they're gonna all run out and buy snowmobiles the next day uh, because they would think it's an anomaly or a distortion or something's not quite right and that's kind of the way I feel right now about the gold to silver ratio at 85 to 1. But, you know, when you take a closer look at it, Chris, there's more to it than meets the eye, far more as far as I'm concerned. On the peripheral, you have J.P. Morgan, the most sophisticated, well-funded, well-informed, influential traders on the globe, amassing 800 million ounces of physical silver in their house account. Now, that's, that's significant. That's eight times what the Hunt brothers tried to acquire in 1980. It's the single largest physical position of silver the world has ever seen. Ted Butler has done a masterful job at evidencing this and showcasing why he believes they have accumulated this. And um, I urge everyone to, uh, to grab his newsletter and check it out. It's worthy of the time. But it's even deeper than that. Uh, on top of the massive accumulation of physical silver, single largest physical position of silver the world's ever seen for only the third time in 50 years the commercial banks are going long on paper in the right. futures market on silver so you put it all together you have the most sophisticated traders on the globe going long on the futures market 
after already amassing the largest position of physical silver the world has ever seen. And I would argue they have proven more than adept at manipulating or controlling the price of silver without accumulating the physical. In fact, Ted Butler will tell you almost a mathematic impossibility that in the decade long that they have been running this short game since they inherited Bear Stearns short position, they have never had one, not one, losing trade in their short book. That is a mathematic impossibility, just about. JP Morgan proved it not to be. But the point of it is, is they've proven they don't need the physical to control the price. Perhaps they've been controlling the price to accumulate the physical. And all of this controlling of the price has created an opportunity of a generation. At 85 to 1, there's only been one other time in 50 years, Chris, where you could even sniff this level. And now, uh, is, as far as I'm concerned, it's a home run waiting to happen. Uh, we can walk people through bringing back their, their gold and sil uh, into silver and helping them do that by sending them UPS boxes and labels and helping with overnight shipping and make it real easy for them. But the bottom line is it's worth the hassle. It's worth the effort. Uh, you don't get to see very many opportunities like this. In fact, I've seen one in the 30 years that I've owned Miles Franklin. Right. And Andy, I appreciate that you pointed out that the banks are able to acquire metal at the low price, which I think is relevant because obviously there's a lot of people who have been buying gold and silver and hearing the reasons why the price should go up. And there's some frustration in waiting yet, like you point out, getting the same advantage that the banks are doing where they're able to buy the metal at a cheaper price. Again, if our goal is to buy low and sell high, um, certainly a lot to indicate this would be a good time to do so. A lot of the folks like Ted and others that respect and have been studying this market for a really long time have mentioned that at this point in terms of the above ground supply, there's actually less physical silver in existence than gold just because so much of it has been consumed in industrial applications and otherwise. So I'm curious if that's the same feeling that you've gotten, which certainly would add to the benefit of a gold to silver swap. Yeah, well, first I want to address what you said before. You know, it's, it's, it's been an overwhelming sense of frustration for all of us invested in gold and silver, largely because of uh, the, the discorrelation between logic and outcome. Uh, and, and again, you know, we, we live in a world where information travels immediately and uh, disseminates to the populace uh, in seconds. And I think uh, if the big money wanted to accumulate silver the way they appear to be doing, the way to do it is through misdirection. To make it look bad, um, to misdirect in price, to violate moving averages 50 and 200 day, to continually frustrate uh, people through a uh, inverse correlation, if you will, uh, between geopolitical and, uh, and, and the price of gold and silver, between uh, the stock market uh, ups and downs and the price of gold and silver. If you can delink the rationale to own it, if you can create frustration, uh, and if you can violate technical indicators, uh, then you have the ability to manipulate things easily. And, and that's what they've done. They have, especially in, in terms of technical analysis, the whole world, employs technical analysis these days to decide if an investment is worthy or not. And if you're able to keep the hedge funds and the mutual funds at bay, in fact, quite to the contrary, they, I believe, have suckered the nitwit technical traders into the largest short position the COMEX market's ever seen by violating technical indicators. At the same time, they've gone long on paper and amassed such an enormous physical position. These are the most sophisticated traders on the globe, and they're not going to be overt uh, overtly transparent, shall we say, in their, uh, in their movements. In fact, quite to the contrary, they are going to do the no-look pass, they're going to misdirect, and they're going to create a perception of reality that allows them to achieve their goal, which is accumulation of all the hard assets at pennies on the dollar, at subsidized prices, and, and no question about it. And to your second point, yeah, I mean, you go back 80 years and anything that conducts electricity, anything you've ever touched, Chris, since the time you were a little kid, the first hair dryer you ever touched, the first handheld video game you ever touched, the first cell phone you ever touched, any camera you ever touched, all the way down to the simple light switch that you touched in the first house you were born in. And 
hair dryer you use, and anything that conducts electricity has a modicum of silver in it. And all of that stuff that you've used over the last 80 years, or we've used over the last 80 years or longer, most of it, when it's scrapped, is found in landfills. Um, right. It doesn't make sense to pull out a hundredth of an ounce of silver off a motherboard or of a cell phone or a fifth of an ounce of silver off an old refrigerator or a seventh of an ounce of silver off an old TV motherboard. But if it were gold, it would. And roughly 85, 90% of all the gold ever used in industry and ever been mined since day one has found its way back into a vault somewhere or in jewelry or in a coin uh, through scrapping. And um, uh, But in silver, that's not the case. And so much of the silver that's ever been mined and used in industry, it's gone forever. And so I would argue exactly that, that even though it is much more abundant in nature, 15.5 times to be exact, there are those, and it's hard to argue with the numbers when you really look at it, that would argue that silver has actually become more scarce above ground. And uh, maybe that's why uh, we're finding J.P. Morgan and, uh, and the commercial banks amassing such an enormous position and, uh, and going long on paper at the same time as well. And maybe that's why they've held the price down so long, so they could accumulate such a vastly important commodity like silver. And uh, so, yeah, I think, um, I think the frustration is warranted, and, um, but I also think it will be rewarded for those who've got strong fingertips, Chris, and yeah. have been able to hang on and are able to hang on and see this through. Yeah, and really just to put that in perspective, I know some of the financial numbers, billions, trillions, things can lose context, but if those reports are accurate that JP Morgan has about 800 ounces, 800 million ounces of physical silver, I believe the consensus estimates of how much investment grade silver is available is one and a half to two billion. So imagine if you went to the gas pump tomorrow, it's $25 a gallon, and you read then in the papers that the reason gas has gone up so much is that a bank has basically half of the world's supply sitting in a warehouse, which again, if these numbers are correct, that's, we're not talking about a small amount. As you mentioned, this is many more times what the Hunt brothers were holding. So, exact the largest position the world's ever seen, Chris. And these guys are, and gals are more sophisticated than the, the rest of us combined in terms of the information they have and the, the, the uh, resources available to them. They would not amass such an enormous position if they didn't believe uh, it was going higher. And I think uh, in order to accumulate the, such an enormous position, you have to first make that position out of favor. Uh, right. Because uh, if the rest of the world got wind that J.P. Morgan was throwing caution to the wind and, and just accumulating hand over fist, they'd be crowded out of their trade in less than a day. And, and so it's the opposite of that. It's misdirect through uh, equity markets that are screaming. And, uh, uh, and uh, at the same time, when everyone is flocking to the opposite side of the floor, you can go in and gobble up all you can with both hands and no one's looking. And that, that's exactly what, what they've been doing, Chris. And that's, I think, where I find solace in, in a market that certainly has not acted the way we thought it would have uh, and has, uh, uh, you know, a bear market that's gone on longer than anyone would have thought possible. But when you see the positioning of uh, the most sophisticated set of traders on the globe, uh, I, at the same time uh, that, you know, the price has been held down, it, it gives me a moment to pause and, and believe that we'll see much, much higher prices and as an end game. I don't think there would be any reason to believe otherwise uh, based upon the movements that we're seeing right now. Right. And certainly I know <laughs> a lot of folks here, a lot of talk about manipulation, wonder whether that's just silver people saying that, yet would like to point out a couple of weeks ago, Bank of Nova Scotia was fined for manipulating the silver market. Deutsche Bank has previously been fined. Um, and plus, uh, fortunately, Miles Franklin has just published a report really going into, especially if you're new to silver, a little more detail on all these reasons why silver 
to you and I at least, and a lot of others, seems like it's a really good level, especially compared to gold. So we'll have that link underneath. Um, but perhaps in wrapping up, you touched on it a little bit, but if folks do have gold and are interested in swapping, if you kind of walk through the process, you know, how, what's the best way to reach you, and then so if somebody does, how that would work. I think one of the nice things about the gold to silver swap is you don't have to have cash coming out of pocket. Um, you can just trade one kind of metal for another. Um, so if you could walk through how that goes and how people can reach you. Yeah, and again, I, I will say, Chris, I really think that the way to succeed in this market uh, is to play the ratios, to make these trades, because again, at an 85 to one ratio with an average of the past 50 years being 42 or three to one, you make the switch with the expectation of doubling the amount of gold you started with when we call you back a year from now or less or two, who knows, and say, hey, that ratio has found its way back to the mean as ratios typically do. Let's make that swap and get you back into gold and double the amount of gold you spent. And in an in and out transaction like that, you haven't spent a penny, especially because uh, we pay the shipping in most cases. So as far as making this transaction, if someone would call us up at 1-800-822-8080 and let us know they wanted to do that, uh, we would send them a UPS air bill with overnight insurance attached on it. Uh, the gold would get shipped right back to us. We would uh, take it in as credit and turn around and send the silver directly back to the client. It's literally that simple. The gold that they send in with our assistance is like a check to us as far as we're concerned or cash on account. So we can even go as far as sending boxes and packing material for those people who would, would require it and uh, make it real easy for them. And, and we can even go as far as having UPS come and pick the product up directly from their house. So they wouldn't even need to leave their house to get this transaction taken care of uh, in some cases. So really easy to do. Just give us a call. We'll lock in the value, send you boxes and labels if you need it, help you send it back, turn around and ship you back your silver, not a penny out of pocket. It's literally that simple, Chris. Yeah. And I, I think you did a great job of setting that up because even as someone who's been in, into the whole metal scene for about a decade now, I know obviously at times, you know, we're thinking, how do we ship this? How does it get there safely? And you've made a lot of those steps easy for people to follow through and take advantage for if what you're saying here makes sense to them, which does to me. So again, uh, it's great to have you on here. Appreciate that you do have this swap available. I know a lot of people have been taking advantage of that. And again, Chris, I'd like to, I'd like to simply tell you that I, I really do believe it's one of the best opportunities I've seen in 30 years. Of, of running Miles Franklin, owning Miles Franklin. I, I don't say that lightly. When you see something that is this far distorted and it's only happened one other time in five decades, you should stand up and take notice. And when you see the most well-funded, well-informed, influential traders on the globe amassing such an enormous position simultaneously, not only in physical, but now for the only the second time in 40 years on, on the Comex market, uh, it, something's happening and when it happens uh, who knows and how it plays out who knows but I think when you can get something that is uh, with odds like this uh, once in 50 years type of odds and uh, I, you know I think it's worthy of, of taking a shot quite frankly yeah and certainly for a lot of folks that missed the subprime bubble in advance and wondered how do you handle a situation like that where you might have noticed it was a bubble in 2004 or 2005 that didn't mean you were incorrect but just sometimes these situations i wonder maybe to really have that type of success maybe that's part of the game where you have to be patient and have some days where you're sitting there and and things aren't going in your favor yet if you look at the value and the fundamentals of what plays out over the long term, certainly I've always, I've had a few gold coins here and there, but primarily allocated to silver myself. So I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Again, folks can reach you at 800-822-8080 or on milesfranklin.com. And with that said, uh, we'll wrap up for today, but thanks again for being on, Andy. Appreciate you sharing this and we'll, Look forward to chatting again soon. Chris, thank you. Appreciate what you're doing. And I can always be reached personally in Andy at milesfranklin.com. And uh, look forward to uh, picking up where we left off sometime uh, real soon, Chris. Thank you. Will do, my friend. Mm -hmm.